In this lab too, we are going to write a complete Java program in a file called filtersort.java that reads all of the tokens from a file named data.txt that is to be found in the same directory as our program. Our program should ignore all the tokens that cannot be read as the integer and read only the ones that can. So it can only read integers and nothing else. After reading all of the integers, the program should print the following integers back to the screen, one per line, smallest to largest, so in order of ascending. Now we're given a data.txt file, and the data.txt file looks something like this. And the data.txt file looks something like this. So we have doubles, we have floats, we have strings, we have characters, but we only want integers. So things like this four, or this 44, this one, this two, or anything in this line. All of that is what we want to store and we want to print out. Our program should not prompt the user for anything and should only print nothing except the sorted list of integers. And if there are no integers, our program should print nothing. If the file does not exist, then our program should instead exactly print file not found and then exit. So now we're gonna start writing the code for this. I'm going to right click over here, make a new Java project and title it, click finish, don't create that. And then I'm going to expand it, make a new folder, make a new package, and then finish this, make a new class inside of the package, and I'm calling it filter sort. I'm going to include the public static void main string args so we don't have to type it out. It's going to finish and we are going to generate this. Now we want to bring our dot data file into our actual Java program. We could do this in the file explorer or wherever the files are, or we can hold this and drag it and bring it into here. And we're just going to leave it on the folder. We're gonna click copy to files and it should show up right here. Not exactly under the Java file, but a little bit next to it. The first thing that we want to do is make an array so that we can store things in here. Now for this program, it's asking us to start by allocating an array of size eight and fill it with the first eight tokens. And then on the ninth token, we are going to replace the array with the size of 16 and copy all the integers in it. And on the 17th, we're going to replace it with size 32. So basically every time it iterates and I guess it maxes out, we are going to have to times two the size. And we're gonna use the arrays.sort method to do this. So first things first, we are going to write our array. Again, this is going to start at eight and we're probably going to have to make it bigger by a factor of two every single time. So we are going to do an int array. To start this, we have int the brackets array, and we're setting this equal to a new int, and then we want the size in here. So we're just going to put in eight. And now we have our array. Next, we want to read in our data.txt. So what we're going to do is have a scanner that reads in our file. We're going to have scanner, and we will call this scan is equal to a new scanner. We'll have our parentheses, Inside of our parentheses, we're going to have a new file where we read in the file, which is just the quotes and then data.txt. That's the file name. And then we are going to import our scanner by hovering over it and then import file by hovering over it. Now this red line lights up because we need to have a file not found exception. So we can either add a throws declaration or surround with a try catch. Now, since we need to print out file not found, if the file is not found, we are going to surround it with the try catch. That way in here, instead of having this, we can just do a sys out and then print file not found. In the first try, we are going to be trying to open the file. If we can't, if the file is not found, we are just going to fall into this catch exception and say that the file is not found. Now that we have that, we can go back into the try and start coding. Now we need to analyze every single thing in our data.txt to make sure it is of type int. So what I'm going to do is make a while loop. That way we can iterate the whole thing. We're gonna say while, and since we're gonna do each thing individually, we are going to do scan dot has next. So it's gonna run as long as there is something next. We're going to have our brackets. And then inside of here, I'm going to make a string that holds the next value. So it's going to hold whatever this is. And then we're going to see if it is an integer. We're going to do string all and they're setting this equal to scan dot next. So it'll get the scanned next and it'll store it in all. After we do this, we are going to try to see if it is an integer or not. So we can add another try catch in here actually. 
into write a try catch, we will have our try our first bracket, and then we're gonna come down here after this one and say catch, and we will just write exception E. And this has to be capitalized, and we're gonna close off these brackets right here. So this exception is for if our next is not a integer. And the try is going to be if our next is an int. So now we're gonna be in this try statement. And what we're going to do to see if this is an integer is use parse int. We will need a temporary value. We'll say int num as a temporary value and set this equal to integer. And this is a method. So integer dot, we're gonna use parse int. And parse int is right here. We're gonna put a string inside of it, take string as a parameter. And we can see the definition of it over here. We can see that the parameter is a string containing the int representation to be parsed. So if it is an integer, it is going to be parsed here. So we'll have a parse int in here and it's going to take all as the parameter and we're just going to end this. After we parse it, it has to be an integer. So we're going to say our array and then we want to increment this every single time because we don't want to keep storing it in the first value. So we're going to need some kind of counter. For this, I will just make a counter up here for our array. We will make it int and I'll just call it counter and set it equal to zero. Now this is just initializing it at zero and we're going to have counter in here. That way the first index of our array can be reassigned to the new num. And we're gonna increment counter every single time we run this. So after we have this set, we're gonna do counter plus plus. So in here, we're gonna say array counter is equal to num. That way, whatever our counter value is, whatever index we are at our array, we are going to store num inside of it. And then we are gonna increase counter so that we can compensate for the next one. Eventually, our counter is going to hit the max array length. Once it hits the max array length, we are going to have to go out of this and we're gonna to have to double our array length. So we can make a method for this. We're going to go down here and we're gonna say if our counter is equal to our array dot length. So if they're equal, we are going to have to size it up and we're going to do this in a method. We are going to have to reassign this array too. So we're just going to do array is equal to, and then we are going to have our method with our array inside of it as a parameter because we're passing it in. So array is equal to the name of our method. We haven't made our method yet, but we can call it double array and copy. That way it doubles the array and it also copies everything over and we're gonna pass in array as the parameter so that we can work with this array. We can hover over this and we can say create method and it'll automatically create this method for us. Now we're going to go in here. It's not going to return null. What it's going to return is an array, but we need to reassign this. So what we're going to do is resize our array. We want to take this size and double it. So we're gonna say int size is equal to our array dot length times two though. So now the size is times two of this. Now we are going to use the method arrays.copy of, and so we need to make a new array and set it equal to this. So we're gonna have int, and this is making the array, array, and we'll call this temp is equal to, and now we're inside of here, we're gonna do arrays.copy of, and we can see it's the first thing up here. And it takes the int original, so the original array as the first parameter, and the next parameter is the new length of it. So we're just going to click this in here. It's going to take our original array, and we're going to double the size, and the size is just going to be size. We have that set already right here. If we wanted to, we could just copy this and probably paste it in here, but I think this works better. So we're going to have this, it's also neater and then we are going to return our array. And if whatever we return, it's going to be stored into this array. So we don't wanna just return the regular array. What we want to do is return our array temp because it is now the arrays.copy of the array in double the size. So once we do that, all of our errors are gone and this should work. Once we do all of this, we are eventually going to break out of our while loop because we are going to have no more values in our data.txt, which I just realized I spelled incorrectly. But after we break out of this for loop, we are going to want to sort our values. We're gonna come below this catch statement to do so. And we're gonna move this over. And now we can start writing. So we want to order 
our array. To order our array, all we are going to do is arrays.sort. So this is another method that we can use. If we scroll down here, we can see all the different methods that we can use with arrays. Arrays.sort, and we want to have three parameters. Our three parameters are going to be the actual array, our starting point, and our ending point. So we're going to use this one right here. It says the first, the front index, and then the last index. So arrays.sort, we're not going to have null. We are going to have array. And then the first value is going to be zero because we want to start at the zero index. And then we can go to counter. And after this, we are going to use a for loop to print this out. We're just going to do for int a is equal to zero. We're going to run this as long as a is less than counter. And then we're going to do a plus plus. And then inside of here, we're just going to do sys out and array and a. That way it'll print it out every single time. If we press run, we are going to get this value. If we press run, we are going to get these values. And that's how we would solve this lab. So if we bring up the data.txt file again, we can see if we were to read through this, that all of the numbers here are inside of here. If we did not have our data.txt file, it should print out file not found. So what I'm going to do is actually delete the data.txt file. I'm going to run it again and it says file not found. I'm going to bring back the text file. So just copying it and putting it in the actual folder, running it again, and we get these values. Now, if I were to modify the data.txt value, so let's say we only had this first line, I'm going to cut this, save it, and then run this. We see that we only get four because we only have four inside of here. I'll control Z this, and I'm gonna cut all of this, save it, run this, and we can see nothing happens. So that is the correct way and the simplest way that I can think of really to go about solving for this lab. When you're done writing, make sure you go up here and you want to have a comment paragraph right here. You want to have a description of your code. And this is the description that I'm going to give my program. After this, you want to have at author where you have the author name, and then you're going to do at version, and then you're going to put the day. Make sure you always write comments in the program to describe everything, just in case you need to look back at it later. And again, if we run this, we can see that it works. And that is how we would program for this lab.